Okay guys, here we have 2025 Ford Explorer ST. This is one of my favorite three row SUVs out there. It's powerful, it's spacious, it drives and it handles amazing. But today we're gonna to talk about what's new for this year. The Ford Explorer launched in 1990, quickly became America's go-to SUV for families. It was rugged, versatile, and offered enough space for the entire family. Fast forward to 2020, Ford introduced the Explorer ST. The ST brought muscle to the Explorer lineup with a turbocharged 3 liter V6 twin turbo making over 400 horsepower. It's where family comfort meets performance, making the Explorer ST a standout in the crowded SUV market. Let us begin first with the front end. First, this massive grille. Look at this black towel. This has got an amazing stance. On top of that, it does scare people a lot. Trust me, I drove this all day and people think I'm a cop driving around, which kind of makes it special in its own way. We got the beautiful Explorer letters blacked out as well. Nothing I noticed, the headlights, these kind of look like stairs now. They've pushed down this top parts and then at the top over here, maybe I can just park my phone like that. There you go. So I can just put my phone right at the top like this because it's extended completely. Then look at the bottom side. We got the glow, glossy finish, beautiful design. We got the side air vents over here with the fog lights. The entire thing is just unbelievably good in my opinion. But having said that, in some ways, because it has this wheel setup, it looks like it hit the gym but forgot about leg day. It looks too biffy, too big. It just needs bigger wheels, in my opinion, to really stand out. Moving on to the side profile, everything remains very much the same. It's not very different. Here you still get an Explorer badge at the bottom, the side skirts. Not a big fan of these wheels, to be honest. I find it not to be the best match for this vehicle. This needs something a bit more beefy, like something you'd see in the Ford Mustang Mach 1. That's what this needs. But you do get a lot of blacked out sides as well, like the mirrors, the part over here on the windshield, the pillars in the center. We've got the rails at the top, which most cop cars don't have. And then we've got the bottom part as well. And that's about it. Very standard, not different to the 2024 or 2023 model. Moving on to the back side, of course, different, similar to the front ends. We've got massive changes here, including the center bar, where it says Explore, the SD badge on the side, the tail lights are different, more aggressive. I like that, really stands out. And then we've got the quad exhaust system, which makes this entire SD package very, very appealing. It looks pretty good, you can't deny that. How does this sound? We'll talk about that when we go for a drive. And we've got a diffuser at the bottom, glossy black as well. Okay, jumping into the interior, second row. The dimensions remain very much the same. You're still getting the same cargo space, which is very, very spacious. You get seven seats. The beautiful thing is that now depends. The beautiful thing is that now it doesn't really matter which trim you pick because you can get the option to get six seats or seven seats. So with some models, you have to go all the way to the top trim to get captain chair. With this one, you don't have that issue, which is great. The seats are beautiful. We've got this suede finish with red stitching all around, traditional to the SD, which makes this a sporty vehicle in many ways. Then we've got the Explorer badge in the center here. So the passenger in the back knows that this is the Explorer while they're sitting or they're trying to work the climate unit. We've got two USB-C ports, 110 volts plug as well. Absolutely love this thing. Spacious, tons of space on the door here for uh, let's say your bottle of water, your phone, there's a sunshade, which my son really likes because if it's too bright inside, he doesn't really like to sleep with too much brightness. We have a panoramic roof. We've got a light at the top, one of these little uh, hitches or like a hanger here that you want to put your jacket or anything like that. If you use this for to go to work and we've got a giant massive air vent at the top, which will blow right into your face. Okay, let's jump onto the interior. Let's talk about this. First of all, this is new for this year. And my first impressions. Well, it looks like the engineers and designers at Ford took a cockpit of a fighter jet and a standard couch at home, like a living room, and combined it into one, hoping to make this thing sporty and comfortable at the same time, which weirdly enough, they actually achieved that really like the way they've done the work on this. They've designed it in a very comfortable, easy way to use. Like you got so much space in here. Let's start talking about each part individually. So I'll show you exactly what it offers and how different it is to the previous year. 
First of all, let's start with the steering wheel. Absolutely love what they do with the ST. You got this nice and grippy steering wheel with the ST badge at the bottom, flat bottom, red stitching all around, glossy finish, two-tone color. Love this, nice and grippy. And you've got pedal shifters in the back so you can have some fun. Now let's start it up. Here we go. And the actual cluster design it's not extremely different it's very similar but now you get the chance to display into the cluster the gps so if you're going somewhere you can actually see the gps right here in front of you and that's through google maps which is quite impressive and if you change different driving modes it will show you've got your light off-road uh, you can do icy snowy roads you got eco you got normal and you've got sports towing and that's about it i usually keep it in sport mode because it's an st so you know the usual stuff really love that easy to read easy to use there is no heads-up display with this package which not sure really matters for some people but some people may say well i pay that much money i'd like to have that there is the super cruise in this case with this package you can see it right on top of the steering wheel and that's about it this one is a little bit different design you've got the bno audio system the shape is different overall even the steering wheel really love this now let's move on to the center side now we have this massive screen in this case i believe this is 13.5 or so it's huge it's the size of a tablet and i prefer this style than the older model where it was like straight down not a fan i like this even more and this one is based on google which is very much similar to what you find on android phones in fact if you go into the apps look at that it's pretty much an android phone You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto app, and so on. WebEx in this case, there is built-in Waze. YouTube, you can watch Sam Car Legion right from there and watch those nice drag races with the Explorer SD, messages, Alexa built in here, Google Play Books, browser. It's pretty much an Android tablet and you've got your news. So it's well equipped. On top of that, the maps is from google maps so it will be a lot easier so you don't really have to connect your phone at this point this is perfect i love this you've got your settings separately uh, for seats in this case you can adjust a lot of that you got your uh, bolster adjustment and so on there's also massage seats with this how incredible is that with an explorer st like that's amazing i think i left them on let me turn them off completely there we go, they're off. We go back, you've got hill descent control, ambient lighting, vehicle status. There's all these settings, easy to use, very, very fast. And what I like about it is the fact that they offer these icons on the side, I as an icon, so that you know exactly what that means. So if you click in here, it will explain to you exactly what the setting means. And you have a lot of information. You can have different profile, Bluetooth, the sound system in this case, it is from bno you can adjust a lot of that in here very easy to use really love what they've done with this on top of that you don't get buttons some people may not like that i generally think it doesn't really matter at this point like a lot of these cars are coming out with massive screens so you kind of get used to it at, at this level uh, there's also a 360 camera which is quite sharp because it's a massive screen and you can adjust a lot of that from here especially for towing this comes in real handy and we've got the 360 on this side really great job with this one i love the screen it's sharp easy to use there's a lot of features that you can go through that i could probably waste your day but i'm sure once you buy one you'd love to go through yourself underneath that screen we've got some extra space most importantly there is an actual wireless charging pad and if you have two phones like the passenger you can put the phone on the other side but there's only one wireless charging pad i wish they could have offered two on that that would have made it interesting because then you have a passenger and the driver but it doesn't really matter because you can just attach with the bluetooth connectivity and you've got all these buttons over here for self-parking mode volume handbrake traction and for the camera so there's still some buttons so if you're complaining they've left some buttons for you further down we've got extra compartment you can store a lot of things here there's also a usb port and a usb-c right inside in there and you can lock that so people don't have to see what you have in there two cup holders driving mode very standard handbrake and you do the driving mode buttons over here this is your shift knob very typical to the explorer i feel like the actual design of this has changed slightly and that's about it but overall absolutely love the interior design of this Under the hood, 
The 2025 Ford Explorer SD that we're driving currently uses a 3-liter V6 twin turbo making 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. Uses a 10-speed automatic transmission. It is a four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive system. And this one is SD-tuned. Suspension system, steering for more aggressive driving and sporty drive at the same time. It sounds amazing. And you can put this thing in manual mode and have some serious fun because you've got the pedal shifters in there and to there. The 10 speed automatic transmission in this SUV is superb. Everything they have done to this, it's exactly what you want from a three row SUV. How does it drive to the 2024? Well, it hasn't changed a lot. In fact, it's more like a facelift on the outside and some of course the changes that we talked about on the inside, it remains very much the same. SUV that a lot of you guys love. I've had this thing on my channel, Drag Race, and a lot of other SUVs, and it has blown me away. It is quick, it is responsive. You put your foot down, it pulls hard. And there is a Grand Highlander in front of me, we'll smoke that guy any day of the week. I love these, and I've been thinking about myself getting one as a family, but I, we just don't need a big vehicle right now, but time will come that I'll need one. One thing I appreciate about this is that in comparison to a lot of other SUVs, it hasn't gotten a lot bigger because everyone else now is just making bigger and bigger and bigger. This one is just not there. And the Grand High Letter is bigger now. The Pilot is a lot bigger now. This one is almost a perfect size and that's what I appreciate. And the important part is that you get blue cruise on this. Like for example, right now we're in a major highway. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the cruise control, put it on, set the speeds and soon the car will recognize that we are on a major highway and it should do the work Blue Cruise is on. And you have lane switching. So I'm gonna go into the HOV lane because I'm not alone in the car. I'm with someone behind me and look at that. Brilliant. It is packed and here's the thing. There's not that many options out there that can compete with this, in my opinion. And yes, there is a Durango, but it's big, it's heavy. It's just not as fast. And let's be honest, it's a gas guzzler, not the best option. This one, it's got the presence. All it needs is some flashing lights, if you know what I mean. And it will be the perfect daily in many ways. It's got the space on the inside, the interior, the changes I like for the phone, you touch your phone, you put it right here, and now you have wireless charging pad right in front of you. There's space here. There's so much space in this vehicle. Uh, quite impressive. I love the giant screen. It's just doing everything. Everything is where it should be, and that's what I appreciate about this vehicle. Now, let's talk about the price. Whether you live in US or Canada, both countries get four trims. In Canada, the base model is called now Active. It starts at about $52,000. And the ST that we're driving started at about $71,000. Meanwhile, in the US, the Active trim starts at about $39,000 and the ST at about $55,000. Now, also keep in mind is that in the US, they offer a rear-wheel drive version, something that we don't get in Canada. What I would have wished to have a bit more of a aggressive exhaust system, I think that would have kind of completed the entire package. But having said that, the opportunities and the options out there to make this thing faster and louder if you wanted to are impressive. Now, another engine I want to talk about is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost inline four. For this year, they've removed a lot of that turbo lag. I got to drive that vehicle and it was just as impressive. For a four cylinder, it pulled hard. We also did an off-road with the ST line, which uses the four cylinder engine. Oh my God, look at this idiot. Hey, you can't park here. What? You can't park here. And quite impressive. This thing has different modes and one of those was the off-road. It did very well. Right now it's beeping because if I'm not paying attention forward, it's going to beep and tell you, hey, keep your hands on the wheel, keep your eyes forward. 
well hands not so much but keep your eyes forward we took the st line with the 2.3 liter ecoboost engine it makes about 300 horsepower around for off-roading uh we did some tests with that i drove it did a launch control and one thing i can tell it feels more aggressive and at the same time the exhaust sounded a little bit different yes some of that sound is coming from the speakers but it gives a nice experience overall so you still have that option if this is a bit much for you it's not something i'm looking i don't need a powerful vehicle then that might be the best choice but having said that here's what i can tell you there's not that many options that can come close to this in my opinion i've had this thing on my channel for drag race and i've done for reviews the st specifically it is a superb suv that ticks all the boxes and even the driving in here even with the st that it has suspension system tuned it's actually quite comfortable would you agree yeah there we go